Have you ever found yourself in a messy situation that you couldn't clean up no matter how hard you tried? Well, stay tuned to learn about the ultimate cleaning solution. They try to change us from the outside in, and that's never gonna work. Because I know that no matter how hard and cold the exterior may seem, I know that inside we hurt. So we just want to come and share some hope with you and let you know that we love you and that Jesus loves you beyond anybody in this world. We're not here today to judge you or condemn you. We're here today to tell you that we love you and we understand the situation that you're in. Hello, I'm Jason Bradley, and I'm so glad that you joined us once again. I'm here with Lemuel Vega, founder of Christmas Behind Bars. And Lemuel, I'm sure you've come in contact with a lot of people that have been incarcerated, and you have a multitude of stories. You know what, brother? Whether they're incarcerated or out there in the world, sometimes our life is so hopeless. I was out of prison for 12 years. I was sick and ready to die. I was more in a derelictic condition out there in society than I was behind these bars. Mm. But God is good. He meets us where we're at, whether we're behind bars or in the free world, and God has plans for our lives. I'd like to just read a scripture, uh, Jeremiah 29, uh, verse 11. Mm -hmm. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. So He has a plan for our lives. He has thoughts for us. He says to give us peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So, so, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, amen? Amen. And not of evil. So, so this great controversy that's going on between good and evil is not God's design. Yes. But He has a remedy. He has a way to help us through this time of trouble in which we live, mm -hmm. to give us an expected end, and that end is eternal life. He said He went to prepare a home for us. Now, here it is in Jeremiah 29, 12. Messy situation in prison, out of prison, no matter where they is. Mm -hmm. Then shall ye call upon me. So we call out to God, say, Lord, I need help. I've tried everything else. Doctors, lawyers, whatever it is. Family maybe let us down. So we've tried everything else. Jesus said, then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken mm -hmm. unto you. He'll take your call. Amen. He'll listen. There is no busy signal. That's Amen. Right. There is That's no right. bad connection. Can you hear me mm -hmm. now? It said, then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken, I will listen, I will pay attention. And so that's the power of the gospel. And you know, I like to use analogies like uh, just something simple that we have around us. Do you have any toilet paper in there? No, sir. You ain't got no toilet You got any toilet paper? Jason, this is just a simple roll of toilet paper. Uh-huh. And, and this is something that people normally probably use 99 Point nine percent people probably use this on a daily basis. Yes. Why do we use toilet paper? Clean up messy situations. Clean up messy situations. Mm -hmm. Amen. Toilet paper cleans up messy situations. Amen. Amen. It says in the Word of God, Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. He'll come, he'll listen. He says, And you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Mm. When we come to God just as we are, He cleans up the internal. Mm -hmm. And when we come to him, he wants to come into our heart. Mm -hmm. We make a decision to call unto him. He wants to come into our heart. And when we, as we invite God into our heart, our mind, our intellect becomes clear. Our heart becomes warm. And then we begin to feel and sense his blessings uh, for our lives. And when the internal begins to change, the external comes into conformity with the internal. Mm -hmm. So that's the power of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And so something as simple as toilet paper to clean the internal, the external, we use that to clean the external, mm -hmm. but God wants to come into our heart and clean the internal, amen? Amen, amen. You know, I love that. I, I think about Daniel, you know, Daniel, in Daniel chapter one, verse eight, it says, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. You think about a messy situation, a messy situation amen. Can, <laughs> can defile you. But he said that, he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. I think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So think about someone who gives their, their heart to the Lord. They're walking with the Lord. They're, you know, they're 
serving the Lord wholeheartedly. Amen. And that doesn't mean that we don't encounter trials, right? Do, do, you, do you think Christians... Brother, you are so absolutely right. You know, with the corona pandemic and the virus, I just had a dear friend. He just buried his wife of 49 years, just buried yesterday. And so, but she died victorious in Jesus. Mm -hmm. She'll be resurrected in Jesus Amen. and they'll be reunited in the kingdom of heaven. So even though we as Christians experience these troublous times, yes. we need to hold on to Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. And, and that's exactly what these three Hebrew boys did here. When they were faced with the situation where the king wanted them to bow down and worship this statue, anytime the music played, and they basically told the king, you know, look, our God can deliver us from this situation. And whether, if, if he does or if he doesn't, we're still, basically, we're still gonna serve him. We're not gonna worship you. That's right. Amen. We're not gonna worship any other God. Amen. So they got cast into the fiery furnace. And where Three of them went in, but there was a fourth one in there with the appearance of the Son of Man. Powerful, powerful story. And that's what God does. He stands with us in the midst of our trials. Amen. You know what I like about it? The king says, who is this God that's able to deliver you out of my hand? Who is this God? But not very long later, he said, looks like one, like the Son of Man. That's right. So he had some kind of knowledge of who, of who that was. That's, you know? that's right. It was a great witnessing opportunity, you know, and we always have these witnessing opportunities if we're going through a trial. How do we respond in the midst of adversity? Amen. That makes a huge Amen. difference. You know, we have the cross here. We use toilet paper for the internal analogy of how he comes into our heart. You know, on the cross of Calvary, Jesus died. He shed his blood there for us. Mm -hmm. And it's his righteousness that covers all iniquity, mm -hmm. all sin. It's his righteousness. So whether people find themselves in a suicidal situation, a hopeless situation, incarceration, maybe they can't make their house payment. Whatever it is, they need, to, they need to continue to look at the cross and realize what our Heavenly Father did through the gift of His Son, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jason, you know, when I, when I got locked up as a young man mm -hmm. in, a, in a jail like this, I remember that we, we set the jail on fire. How can you set a jail on fire? Because it's after all it's, all, it's all steel. But we stuffed, there was a hole up there, and we almost all died that night because the smoke filled the jail and and there we were in a, in a bad situation. People do things not to really hurt other people. Sometimes it's just misguided energy. Mm -hmm. You know, the people in Florida, the young people in Florida that took a stop sign down, all they wanted to do was see a car crash. Mm -hmm. They didn't think somebody would get killed. And so, you know, as a young boy, we used to put boulders on the railroad track, boulders. And uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to see the train come by and fall off the track. Wow. I didn't do it to, to hurt anybody, but, and, and so we just, without Jesus, without purpose in our lives. There is no purpose in video games. There is no purpose in secular music. There is no purpose in secular TV. There is no purpose working all of our life for some big retirement. There is no purpose in this life outside of Christ. Amen? Amen. How is it that you gave your life to Christ? Your life was full of all kinds of, you were going and moving and doing fancy things, but at some point you were empty inside. How did you give your life to Christ, brother? Well, I found myself in a very messy situation. My appendix had ruptured. I was misdiagnosed. I remember lying in the hospital bed thinking that I was going to die, not knowing whether or not I was going to live or die. And Amen. if I would have died right then, I would have died in my sins. I had my mother who was there helping me do things that I couldn't even do for myself, such as brush my teeth and walk over there. So she was walking me to the sink to go brush my teeth. And I remember her crying because I had become flesh and bones. I was so skinny. And this was at a time where I had made a promise to God. I didn't even serve God at the time. I didn't want anything to do with God. But as we often do, when we find ourselves getting into these horrible situations, self-inflicted trials, we say to God, God, if you get me out of this, if you get me out of this, I'll change, I'll do something different. And I believe you really meant that. But on our own, we can't. That's right. My stomach was left open, open to close. They didn't stitch me up or anything like that. I had gauze pads covering my stomach. A Couple weeks into recovery, I ended up going back to a known drug area to purchase some drugs to sell. Ended up getting arrested that day and I just spent the night in jail, but I was looking at a potential maximum prison sentence of 15 years. In a place like this. In a place like this. But God saw fit to give me a second chance. 
And so I didn't accept him right then, but I made behavioral modifications and then eventually he grabbed a hold of my life. My mother never stopped praying for me. And those prayers really helped to transform my life. God heard her prayers. As you're willing, he's able. Amen. As you're willing, he's able. Amen. The Bible says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. He was with you. He abode with you. He walked with you. He encouraged you. He called you. As you was willing to surrender, he was there for you. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us an expected end. It wasn't incarceration. Nope. It wasn't death. That's not his design for humanity, mm -hmm. but it's eternal life. Then shall you call upon me. You called upon him. You prayed unto him. He heard you, he hearkened with you, and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Mm -hmm. So every day in our culture, as we use toilet paper, paper towel, napkins to clean up external messy situations, would you encourage our world today to ultimately think of Christ? Oh, absolutely, 100%. If you accept Christ in your life, you won't regret it. You have somebody who you can take your burdens to, who you can pray to, who wants to hear from you, who loves you so much, even more than your parents love you. Jesus loves you so much. You can't say that anybody else died for you, but Jesus did that for your life and for mine. Jason, I believe there's somebody at home right now, perhaps incarcerated. Would you have a prayer, brother, for the appeal you just made? Absolutely. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to lift up that individual that may be incarcerated or that is living in the free world but a slave to sin and bondage to sin. And Father, we just ask that you would please break that, that bondage Amen. that the devil has on, on his or her life and that you would grab a hold of them and that you would draw them to you as time is short and save their soul. In Amen. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I've been here in this, I think, in this jail eight times. Been battling addiction most of my life. When my mom, I lost my mom before when I was 13, so that kind of did a spiral for me. It was just my dad raising nine kids. He wasn't always there because he was always at work or whatever, and it's been a struggle. I've tried, I've tried to quit and try to quit. It something leads me back to those streets, and unfortunately. That's why I'm in here now. I relapsed again, and now I'm gonna probably do the next 20 years in prison. I just met with my lawyer yesterday, so yeah, I just got this, that news yesterday. That reconnection with God came to me a year ago when um, the chaplain of the jail could come in here, and he came in here, and we did classes like every Wednesday or every Thursday, would it depend on what day he came in here. I hate to say this, but in jail is where I seem to get close to God. And when I'm on the street, I'm there, but I'm not all there. You know, I've, changed, I've done a 360 around, so, and I don't want to live in that lifestyle anymore. I want to live for the Lord. It's going to be a new beginning wherever I go, whether it's on the street or whether it's in prison. I mean, I don't have to live this way anymore, and I refuse to live this way anymore. I can't believe, Lemuel, that our time is almost up. What's the final thought that you have? Final thought is there's hope in this troublous time that we live in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise yes. the Lord. I want to thank you, Lemuel, for the job that you are doing with the men and women that are incarcerated and what you're doing with Christmas Behind Bars and ultimately winning souls for the kingdom. We invite you to tune in next time. Till then, God bless you.